Uh, what's important for us to recognize when you buy a leg of lamb in this case? We're looking for what? Quality grades. Does one see any kind of particular number on here? Name? Choice. So we look, is a choice a good selection? Yes. In conjunction with the uh, quality grade, you're also looking for this stamp. Indicates what measurement? Is a yield, is a yield three a good measurement? Uh, what's a preferred range between two and three? You need some fat, not too much. A uh, one be completely lean, would have hardly any fat. A four probably would have twice as so much fat, so we have extremes. Uh, what we first do, I'm going to take this out of membrane of called collagen tissue, which hardens up with cooking, should be removed first. And you start the interior. We can now see in part, partially, the tailbone. Uh, not so clear the pelvic bone, shank bone, femur bone, kneecap is hidden. We see in part on the interior the top round, uh, this is covered with fat, there will be the knuckle, and so forth and so on. We get this as it goes along, otherwise it becomes a little confusing. So let's take one step at a time. What you want to do is get started by the top round. And we're walking towards to remove the flank stick first. The flank stick is so tiny lamb, uh, where it's barely two ounces, it's gonna peel out, becomes now a case usable term. So what you therefore should do, make a small cut, so that the muscle peel the flank stick out only, and leave the fat intact for later on for the grip. Usable term. Uh, right behind, it's not clearly visible, is an inner flank, the same muscle, has got the same size shape also on the use for usable term. You're also going to pull this out as well. So we're taking up two muscles side to side, the flank stick in the flank, goes for use of trim. We're then going to proceed, now here's our grip. Got to hold the fat, do not cut the fat off, otherwise you have no support. Use the other hand to locate natural seams. Secure so longer sheets see on the very bottom natural seam, do not overcut, once it's the seam, you put the knife away and you use your hand. Pull it back. This should pull back towards you. If the leg is cannelling, it might not work. They may have to use a knife. If that's the case, they can cut some fat off, save the fat because we're doing a yield test. So if the connective tissue should rip, you can go back to, like we done the other day on the beef tenderloin, you're going to trim it off. What's crucial is tension. In this upward initial motion. Tension is crucial and remove the outer membrane co collagen tissue. If it does break, you pick it up again back here. The underlying layer of fat is not a major concern. We need to leave some fat on there. Maybe ideally remove some of the blue stem. The small stem is not a big concern. We don't worry about it. You might find some more lumbar fat. If so, remove this also, save it because we're doing the yield test. We've removed the butt tender. That's right against the bone. What you need to use is a wrist motion. We get behind the butt tenderloin, use the support of the bone, holding the butt tenderloin, and scrape it down the bone till you see a white cartilage. What the cartilage indicates for you is whether two bones match up. Now, if you're not clear where, which way to go, put the knife away and do a counter rotation. Can one see any a small little tiny shift? Shift indicates to you that's where the two bones meet, that's where you like to place the knife in between. So in between the shift, you can put your knife slightly upward, the toward tip only. You pry it partial backwards. To get a hand, pry it back and take a knife and completely take the bone up by making a cut alongside the tailbone. Pelvic bone is most complex. A uh, reason why it's about three, three quarter parts hidden. We do not see, we only see a part of, this is the entire length. Half across it connects to the ball and socket joint, which we do not see. So what you now need to do is get a good grip the other hand supports go behind the pelvic bone, and here's your top round. 
Now you're going to get a face grip, cut very shallow. There comes a small curve. When you now shoot this cover, if you come a little closer, is the ball and socket showing. See it back in here? And that's our goal to, to find. I'm going to open this up a little more for you. You can come a little closer. That's where the two bones connect to each other. Now, what in this joint, if you can recall from a few days ago, is a little tender beneath the pop. Expose the full length first. One person takes the tip of knife only, about a quarter cut, and the tendon is cut. What's going to happen is the bone opens up a, a much farther part. This could be done with partnership. You can't lose the one side first, going this way, next person can't the other way, but you like to work in this joint. You cut underneath, the other hand supplies leverage. See my left hand's cut prime pressure. Get below the pelvic bone, support this, and cutting away from it against the bone. If you're not clear, move the bone back, for you're going to see an outland direction. Now, you're going to have a little problem at the far end. We do not see yet. Uh, the bone extends, it's called a spur. They give an inch or longer. Once you hit the spur, you like to scrape. See that in my knife? That's a spur. Once you reach across the spur, using leverage, make a half a round cut in rotation, you should be able to take out the entire pelvic bone. But we now do want to take out the shank bone first, but we need to find, we have to locate the stifle joint. A way to find is you put a finger on top, you want to see a curve. You want to locate the soft spot, indicate stifle joint. Now be aware, if you cut too far, you cut behind the kneecap, there's no joint back here. So you want to choose to find the first soft spot indicates the stifle joint location. As you do this, you turn it sideways and make a square cut on the edge of the table. Connections are broken. Now do not take the shank off, you're taking out only the shank bone, be aware. And the, the joint is like a unique, has got a figure, uh, shape, uh, like a letter, like a number three uh, shape, two curves, or like a letter E backwards, two curves. This way, this way. So be aware of your wrist motion. You make a score along the shank bone first, on one side first. There's a straight side, the other side is curved, it also could be reversed. You break the joint first, do not take the shank mid off. Make a score on either side and go back and repeat the same cut. Get a fair square with either hand, cut towards the bone the entire length. Making three or four cuts with a slight turn, the shank bone should pop out. So again, what's important for us, we have to find the stifle joint first. <clears throat> a number three, letter E. Score both sides and keep cutting until the bone is completely been removed. Uh, we can now identify the top round has a round shape. A knuckle looks like a pear shape. You're going to see now between the two muscles, two seams, a higher seam, lower seam, always choose the higher seam. The higher seam is going to lead you to lead to seam, also going to find underneath a blood vessel, uh, shows you that you're on the right track. You open up the entire seam, cutting towards the bone using leverage. Feel free to use your hand, stick your hand in between, push down, you're going to feel the bone right behind. The bone is not an indicator for direction. So, upper seam first, get half inch down, reinforce the seam, and now open up the entire top round along the femur bone, the exposing one half. Top round, a reverse now. Make another cut along the Femur bone the entire length. If, uh, if you cut close, uh, this could be achieved, but it does feel down the road. It saves you time cleaning. If it doesn't work out, don't feel bad. Now, what I do also, 
I incorporate the knee with the femur bone out of safety reasons. <clears throat> so we get to the bone, expose both sides, make a circular cut from the outside, completely around. I reverse the leg lame, put the bone towards you, cut behind the femur bone, the circular cut, making one or two cuts, the femur bone should peel out. When you lay in the right bottom a socket, you make two or three circular cuts with rotation of the opposite hand. Come right back. If now remove both bones, the femur bone and the adjacent kneecap as well.